Now that you're hopefully somewhat comfortable with graphing inequalities, now we're going to start solving linear inequalities. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to solve a linear equality in one variable. Okay, we're going to just go ahead right into jump into solving inequalities. You will notice that on these, they're pretty much the same as solving an equation. We'll follow the same rules, but when we're done, we'll have to graph it because there is more than one answer. Okay, so we're going to start with this first one. We have x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 3. Okay, um, what we're going to do on this one, pretty much just pretend like there's an equal sign there, so solve it just the same. So just like we do on a normal equation, we will subtract 5 from both sides. And then we'll have x, we'll have negative 2, but this time instead of putting an equal sign, we're going to bring this sign down. So it's going to be x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So we have now solved it, but again, there's more than one answer, so we graph it to show all the answers that actually work. So we're going to start with negative 2 again. There is an equal sign, so we're going to go ahead and close in the circle. And then it does say greater than, so all the numbers that are greater than negative 2 are the numbers to the right of negative 2. And again, if you need to, you can check your arrows and notice that they match. So that's how you do it. So very, very similar to an actual solving equation problem. Okay, this next one we have negative 2 is less than n minus 4. Okay, what we're going to do on this one, just like we did, we did when we were graphing inequalities before I even try to solve it, we need to flip-flop the right and the left side. So I'm just going to totally switch stuff. So here, the n minus 4 is going to go on the left and the negative 2 is going to go on the right, and then I'm going to, instead of a greater than sign, we're going to change it to a less than sign, okay? You might think that that is a very unnecessary step, but it really will save you from getting the wrong answer lots and lots of times, so please do that. Okay, so now we're just going to pretend like this is an equal sign. To get rid of minus 4, we're going to do plus 4 to both sides, so I'll have n. On the other side, I'll have 2, and then I bring down that sign and keep it a less than sign. So my answer is n is less than 2, and now I'm ready to graph it to show all the answers that work. So we'll put 2 on the number line, we'll put a 3, we'll put a 1. Whoops, over here I forgot to put numbers on either side. Shame on me. Okay, so now there's no equal sign, which means we don't get to include 2. 2 is not one of the answers, but all of the numbers less than 2 work, which would be all the numbers to the left side. And again, if you checked the two arrows, they do match each other. All right, let's try some more examples. Let's say I have 11 minus 3x is less than 7. Okay, again, we're just going to treat this like it's an equal sign. So just like we normally do when we solve, we're going to subtract 11 from both sides. Okay, so I'll get negative 3x. And on this side, I have negative 4, which I really did not, what I was supposed to put. A 44 there so we're gonna put a 44 there because I want it to work out nice okay so we're putting a 44 there instead okay so 44 minus 11 is 33 okay I just bring down that greater than sign okay now what we need to do to both sides to solve for X is to divide both sides by that negative 3 so I'm going to have X 33 divided by negative 3 was negative 11 but Special case here, remember that I just divided by a negative number. So if I divide by a negative number, I have to switch the way the inequality is going. So I'm going to make my greater than sign into a less than sign. Okay, so my answer is now x is less than negative 11. And again, I'm going to graph it to show all the answers that would work. So we're going to start at negative 11. I'm going to put some numbers on either side. Um, we're not including negative 11 because there's no equal sign. Okay, and then if I want all the numbers less than that, it would be all the numbers to the left on the number line. Okay, so that's how that answer would look. Okay, let's put a number in here for 8, and we're going to put negative 12. Okay, on this one, I would like you to, again, pause the video, try the problem on your own, and then please come back and check your answer when you're done. All right, I'm assuming you've paused it and you're back, so thank you. All right, first thing that I want to do is go ahead, just like a normal equation, we're going to add 8 to both sides. So I'll have 2y, negative 12 plus 8 is negative 4, and then we're just going to keep bringing down that less than sign, and now we'll divide both sides by 2, so I'll get y is less than negative 2. Okay, notice on this one you might have been tempted to um, change the, the way the inequality was going because you got a negative answer, but I did not divide by a negative number, so I don't need to switch it. So now I'm ready to graph it, so I'll start at negative 2. 
there is no equal sign, which means negative 2 is not one of our answers, so we don't get to include it. And then less than negative 2 would be all the numbers to the left side. So hopefully you got the right answer. Okay, let's keep doing some problems here. Number 9, let's put an 18 in that blank, right? Just like if we were solving an equation, which I know you guys are really good at, the first thing we're going to do is distribute. So I'll get 2x minus 6. Remember, we had to take the 2 times both things inside. And I'll still have less than or equal to 18. All right, my next thing, just like in solving, is to get rid of that minus 6. So we'll do plus 6 to both sides. So now I'll have 2x is less than or equal to 24. And especially in this one, it's important just to keep bringing down that inequality sign till we're all the way done. Okay, then I'll divide both sides by 2. And when I do that, I'll get x. 24 divided by 2 is 12. And then I just keep the less than or equal to sign in my answer. So that is my answer. And then again, we want to graph to show which numbers work. So 12, 13, 11. Since there is an equal sign, we can go ahead and close it in. And then we want all the numbers less than 12, which would be all the numbers to the left on the graph. All right, number 10, let's put a number in there. Let's put a 21. And once again, I would like you to pause the video and I'd like you to practice this problem and then come back and see how you did. All right, again, we're going to distribute on this one. So I will get 3x plus 12 is greater than 21. Just like normal solving problems, we will subtract 12 from both sides. So I now have 3x is greater than 12, 21 minus 12 is 9. And then I'll divide both sides by 3. And so I will get x is greater than 3. And you'll notice the importance of showing all my steps because for sure I have my inequality in the right spot. I didn't forget my x and everything is all good. So now to represent it on a number line, we'll start at 3. Put some numbers on both sides. And greater than, there's no equal sign, so I don't get to include it. So it's going to be an open circle. And then greater than are all my numbers to the right. And there we go. All right, I know you just want to keep doing problems, so we're going to keep doing problems. All right, let's put a 7 here. Practice makes perfect, right? Okay, first thing we need to do, just like we do on the solving problems, we need the x's on the same side. So to get the three, get rid of the 3x, I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. Now, I know some people would have been tempted to get rid of the negative x. I would strongly suggest keeping everything going to the left side instead, though. Okay, so negative, this would be like a negative 1x, and a negative 3x will be negative 4x plus 1 is less than or equal to 7. Okay, now we're just going to keep solving it like a normal problem. I'll subtract 1. So now I have negative 4x is less than or equal to 7 minus 1. Oh, did I do that right? 7 minus 1 is 6. Okay, we're not, we're not going to get a nice answer, but you know what? That's okay. All right, we'll divide both sides by negative 4. And then, let's see, those will cancel. We'll get x. 6 divided by negative 4 is actually negative 1.5, if you worked that out. And then since I divided by a negative, I do have to switch the way my inequality is going, so I do have to make that greater than or equal to negative um, 1.5. Okay, so putting it on a number line might be a little bit of a challenge. Okay, negative 1.5, I'm going to put right there. Um, I just know on one side for sure is going to be negative 1, and then on the other side is going to be negative 2, because being a dollar fifty in the hole is somewhere between being a dollar and two dollars in the hole. Alrighty, then we get to include negative 1.5 because there is an equal sign. And then since it's greater than, I need all the numbers to the right. So that would be my answer. All right, I'm going to let you try another one. Let's put a 27 here. Hopefully that one will work out a little bit nicer. Would you please pause the video at this point in time and then come back and check your answer. All right, first thing I'm going to do to get rid of the 4x, I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. After I do that, 2x minus 4x is negative 2x minus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 27. And don't forget to bring down this minus sign with you. And then from here, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So I'll get negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 20. And then we'll divide both sides by negative 2. So I'll get x. Negative 20 divided by negative 2 is 10. And I did divide by a negative, so I have to change the way that my inequality is going. So I have to make it a less than or equal to 10. So I'll put 10 on my number line. And then there is an equal sign, so I do get to include it in my answer. And then less than would be all the numbers to the left of it on the number line. 
All right, we have two problems to go. We can make it. These are a little bit special, so I'd like to go both through both of these with you. All right, so on this first one, I'm going to put a one there. Okay, the left side is all set. I'm just going to leave the left side alone. I'm gonna bring down that greater than or equal to sign. Okay, notice we have a four on the outside of the parentheses. So I'm going to multiply both things inside, both numbers inside by four. Four times two x is eight x minus four times one is four. Okay, now when we go to subtract, we are going to subtract eight x from both sides to get the x's together. So notice these cancel out and these cancel out. So I now have negative four is greater than or equal to negative four. So notice I have no letter to solve for. So I'm gonna put, there's no variable to solve for. So what does that mean? The variable drops out. Well, if I look at this, is negative four greater than or equal to negative four? Yes, because it's equal to negative four. So I came up with the true statement. So what this means is no matter what I put in for x, the x's are just going to cancel each other out, and I'm going to be left with something that is true. So that means I can pick absolutely anything that I want for x, and this will always work. So the way that we're going to show that is we are just going to fill in the number line to show that every single number works. If I had to write out my answer, my answer would be all real numbers work. All right, let's try one last one. This one again, we'll put a one in. I'm going to start solving it just like normal. The left side we will leave alone. The right side, again, I do need to distribute. Negative two times x is negative two x. Negative two times negative one is a positive two. Okay, just like we did on the previous problem, we're going to add two x to get the x's on the same side. These drop out, these drop out, and notice that I get nine is less than two. So once again, the variables don't matter because they dropped out, but I got nine is less than two, and nine is never less than true. That is a false statement, which means no matter what I plug in for x, this will never ever give me a right answer. So I don't shade anything in on the number line, and I can put no real number will work, or if I wanna get fancy about it, I can put a circle with a slash through it, then that means no real number works. So hopefully now you can solve a linear inequality.